ang lahat ng mga ebidensyang nakalap at mga testimonya na naibigay na ay patungo na na atin ang nalalaman na posibleng may suicide bombing na naganap. The Philippine National Police believes that the deadly blasts in Holo Cathedral and Sulu were carried out by suicide bombers. The Philippines' title as the world's heaviest internet user is a result of slow connection according to an ICT expert. And Miss Universe of Vietnam Yihani visits the Philippines. Good evening. The police are convinced that the perpetrators of the Holo Sulu Twin Blasts are suicide bombers. Mirasol Abogadil tells us why. The Philippine National Police or PNP believes that a suicide bomber is behind the bombing in a cathedral in Holo Sulu last Sunday. This, according to PNP spokesperson Police Senior Superintendent Bernard Banak, is based on evidence that the police have gathered. Based on their investigation, no crater was found in the blast site, which is unlikely to happen if the bomb had been placed on the ground before it exploded. This would mean that the bomb was positioned higher than ground level. In addition are the body parts found strewn at the bombing site, which no one claims to be of their relatives. Sa ngayon, na-interview na ang lahat ng mga pamilya ng mga namatay at lahat sila ay nagsasabi na ang kanilang mahal sa buhay na naging biktima na namatay ay wala namang nawawalan na parte ng, kanilang, ng katawan ng kanilang mahal sa buhay. Kaya ang, ang katanungan ay kanino nang galing ang mga body parts na ito. Uh, sa kasalukuyan, wala namang uh, lumalapit at nagsasabi na sila ay uh, namatayan or, or nawawalan ng kamag-anak. Banak added that they are awaiting the result of the DNA test on the body parts that belonged to the alleged suicide bomber. Ang lahat ng mga ebidensyang nakalap at mga testimonya na naibigay na ay patungo na sa na atin ang nalalaman na posibleng may suicide bombing na naganap. At ang lahat ng ito ay hintayin lang natin na makumpirma paglabas ng DNA testing na ginagawa ngayon. Yung mga nakuha ng mga iba't ibang body parts ay kailangan nating pagtugma-tugmain kung doon nga ba nanggaling sa iisang tao o dalawang tao. At kailangan na nating malaman kung ito nga ay galing sa isang babae at sa isang lalaki. Meanwhile, the Armed Forces of the Philippines Western Mindanao Command or AFP West Mincom said that determining whether the perpetrator of the Holo Blast is a suicide bomber is not their priority. Instead, the West Mincom is focusing on hunting down the group responsible for the bombing. The reality is, it's a terrorist attack and uh, it's a mass murder and there's so many casualties. And uh, what what can we achieve in the first place if we will be focusing on determining whether it's a suicide attack or not? Our point now, focus now, is for the manhunt of the perpetrators, particularly the Abu Sayyaf group. The West Mincom also refused to give its statement on whether there are foreigners responsible for the crime. This is in connection to the report that a Yemeni couple is behind the bombing. We do not have any basis about that. Probably there are uh, information reaching uh, higher headquarters, that, uh, but I'm not privy to it. The AFP maintains that the Abu Sayyaf subgroup Ajang Ajang is the prime suspect in the crime. The military also leaves the investigation on the suspect's identities to the police and the National Bureau of Investigation or NBI. The AFP also continues its all-out offensive against the Abu Sayyaf group. It can be recalled that two bombing incidents took place at a cathedral in Holosulu on Sunday, which killed 22 and injured 96. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV News and Rescue. The Armed Forces of the Philippines has a reason to believe that the Ajang Ajang group is behind the twin blast in Holosulu. Victor Cosare tells us why. 
The Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP considers alias Kama, a member of the Ajang Ajang Group, as the prime suspect in the Holosulu twin blasts. Ajang Ajang is a subgroup of the militant and private group Abu Sayyaf. In 2014, the name Ajang Ajang surfaced, operating under its leader alias Kama. Colonel Noel Detoyato, the chief of the Armed Forces of the Philippines Public Affairs Office or AFP POW, revealed that the members of the Ajang Ajang Group are relatives of ASG leaders killed in battle or in military operations. On how they were formed, nagkaroon lang sila ng common siguro na thing between them. Kaya sila nagkaroon ng uh, informal na organization and then nakita ng, na sila ng ASG na potential na magamit nila. Kaya naging subgroup sila ng ASG. Colonel Detoyato added that the Ajang Ajang group is composed of 14 to 60 members who are based in Holosulu. The group perpetrates kidnapping and extortion activities. Its members also serve as spotters for the ASG's kidnapping activities. Itong mga batang ito, ang uh, modus operandi nila is mga silang taga-deliver na extortion ng mga sulat. So, nagdideal sila ng drugs. And then uh, spatter kung sino yung mga potential na pwedeng kunin na uh, gawin kidnap victim. Alias Kama serves as the present leader of the Ajang Ajang group. He is the brother of Abu Sayyaf sub-leader Suraka Ingog who was killed in a military operation last year. The military has ongoing pursuit operations against Kama in Patikul Sulu. Alias Kama's other brother, Omal Yusuf, was killed in military operations in Barangay Lati, Patikul Sulu last Tuesday. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. After the two bombing incidents in Holosulu and Sambuanga City, the authorities' capability to curb terrorism remains a question among Metro Manila residents. Joe Anano tells us why. Residents in Metro Manila are worried about the possible terror attack in the country's capital region since business center and various establishments are located here. And although the Philippine National Police has no any information on possible terror attack in Metro Manila, it has declared the entire country under heightened alert level after the two bombing incidents in Holosulu and Sambuanga City in Mindanao recently. But what government agencies are responsible in case the same situation occurs in Metro Manila and how prepared are these agencies in responding to the possible terror attack? In America, the U.S. government has created a joint terrorism task force in 1908. This consists of various government agencies such as the Federal Bureau of Investigation or FBI, the U.S. Secret Service, the U.S. Marshal Service, the Bureau of Alcohol and Tobacco Firearms and Explosives, the U.S. Army and Naval Criminal Investigative Science and other departments. Here in the Philippines, the National Capital Region Police Office is the one in charge of maintaining peace and order in Metro Manila. NCRPO Chief Guillermo Elizar said the police force is ready to respond to possible terror attacks. But the police official admitted that they cannot do it alone and they should be in collaboration with other government agencies. Hindi lang naman ng, uh, ang ating kapulisan or NCRPO ang nakatutok dito. All other uh, instrumentalities ng ating uh, pamahalaan ay may kanya-kanyang role just in case na magkaroon ng problema. May mga protocol sa dapat sundin. Ang sa atin naman kasi, kami bali is security and police assistance. We have uh, uh, other emergency teams and units coming from other agencies of the government. Apart from managing traffic, the Metro Manila Development Authority or MMDA is also in charge of public safety. The agency assures that the rescue units are ready to respond in case there are bombing incidents. But the agency explained that the instruction should still come from the PNP before they could act on it. In the meantime, the Armed Forces of the Philippines is responsible to respond to all terror attacks in Mindanao since the entire region is under martial law. Although Malacanang is not disregarding the possibility of a terror attack in Metro Manila, the Philippine government has yet to establish a counter-terrorism task force like what other countries have. And despite the two bombing incidents in Mindanao, Malacanang is confident that acts of terrorism will not spill over in other parts of the country and there is no need to extend the martial law in Metro Manila. There is no spillover. It's still, Prevent this spillover. It's still there. The government will respond so to no, whatever no. succeeding events that may happen. At the moment, But we're no. ready for any eventuality in that area. We would like to assure the general public that they can go about their normal activity life, our country is still a safe haven. 
Joanano UN TV News and Rescue, Quezon City. An information communications technology expert believes that the slow internet connection in the country may be related to the number of hours spent by Filipinos in using the internet. Rosalie Cojas explains why. Filipinos use the internet for a variety of reasons such as for entertainment, for pastime, for work and for communication and information. Facebook na lang po, tas mga, mga assignment, mga pinapa-search, ganun lang po. Bilang matanda, de syempre yun ang libangan ko. <laughs> Kesa makipag-chismisan ako, de gumamit tala ako ng internet. Di ba? Okay. Mabilis yung talagang paghahanap ng information, pag-alam, talagang kung mag-research ka, mabilis, marami ka pang pagpipilian. Based on the Digital 2019 report of the social media management firm Hootsuite and We Are Social, Filipinos use the internet through any device with an average of 10 hours and 2 minutes daily. A large chunk of that 10 hours is spent on the use of social media. This means the Philippines bested other countries in terms of internet usage despite the slow internet connection in the country. Engineer Pierre Tito Galia, an information and communication technology expert, believes that Filipinos spend longer time in the internet because of slow connection. Anecdotally, ang isang magiging pwedeng conclusion namin, eh syempre tumatagal ng 10 hours on the average kasi hindi ganun kabilis ang internet. However, Galia said that in case the country already established a faster connection, the number of hours spent by Filipinos in using the internet may no longer change. He added that with a faster internet, Filipinos may just rather use the time in accessing more content pages. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Miss Universe Vietnam Hien Nye, admired by many for her inspiring story, is in the country. The Miss Universe 2018 runner-up on Friday posted snaps of her arrival at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport where she was welcomed by her Filipino coach Angel Santos with a bouquet of flowers. She later gushed about eating her favorite tuyo or dried fish at a restaurant in Pasay City. He had landed in the top five of the prestigious Miss Universe pageant, which was won by Miss Philippines Catriona Gray in December. She later continued to win hearts after she donated all the prizes she received to achieve her dream of building libraries and supporting school children in rural areas of Vietnam. The Vietnamese beauty also belongs to an ethnic minority called Raid. And her unique background story inspired various women around the world. A singing gem from Mindanao is added on the list of grand finalists of Wishcovery Season 2. Leslie Longbowen tells us why. Last night's knockout battle was crucial for which cover composer Vanny Saturno. This as he had to make the choice on who between his bets, Anna against Sana. And Rydal Garcia will represent his camp. Producer's pick Christian Rosa from Cebu also made sure to impress Venny in his last step towards the grand finals of which got season 2, the singer and the song. criteria for selecting his camp's representative. Okay, lagi kong sinasabi, kailangan pag umawit sila, pag nag-perform, eh, andun yung puso, andun yung dynamics, andun yung linis. And among the three, soon to rise belter Anna prevailed. Kinapangarap ko lang na ito eh. Ikot ako talaga yung expect na pumasok pa ako doon sa kainas. 
The list of seven grand finalists from all camps in the Philippines will be complete this weekend. Watch out for who the bets from Camp Boy Christopher, Camp Noel Cabangon, and Camp Moy Ortiz only on the country's number one YouTube channel, Wish 1075, will be. Leslie Lumboan, UN TV News and Rescue Philippines. Up next on One News. Former presidential spokesperson Harry Roque withdrew his bid for the 2019 midterm elections. And the deceased riddled mommy found in Ecuador is believed to help cure arthritis. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of Wine News. More reasons behind the stories with Angelo Castro III and William Theo after this quick break. I'm Rina Villamor Camera. Welcome back to Wine News. We pick up from where Rina Villamor Camara left off. I'm Angelo Diego Castro III. And here are the headlines. I don't want to speculate on how teachers will react if we tell them that you're going to have to work without pay. The Commission on Elections warns that there will be no honoraria for teachers in the 2019 polls. Access to lawmakers' statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth will soon require House approval. And detained Senator Laila de Lima wants to call former President Benigno Noynoy Aquino III to stand as witness in the charges of conspiracy to commit illegal drug trading. A Montilupa court entered a not guilty plea on behalf of Senator Laila de Lima over the charge of on conspiracy to commit illegal drug trading. My Bermudez tells us why. Senator Laila de Lima and her former driver bodyguard Ronnie Dayan were finally arraigned at the Muntinlupo RTC Branch 205 today for their drug-related case. The case was now handled by Judge Lizela Quiatan after Judge Amelia Fabros Corpus was transferred to another court branch. The case stemmed from the alleged conspiracy between De Lima and Dayan in the trade of delivering and trafficking of illegal drugs inside the new Belibid prisons when the lawmaker was still the justice chief. But the senator refused to enter her plea during the arraignment, while Dayan made a not guilty plea entry. Under court rules, if an accused has refused to enter a plea, an automatic not guilty will be entered by the court on his or her behalf. During the Lima's pre-trial, the defense has listed former President Benigno Aquino III, including several former government officials, including former PNP Chief Bato de la Rosa, then-Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre, and DILG Secretary Eduardo Año. The Lima's legal counsel said the former president's testimony is important, since the lady Solon became his alter ego and the cabinet member. Because uh, being the president, he has all the information relative to the topic sa, sa ng court ng kaso natin eh. Meaning, we want to present him to prove na at all times material sa kaso na to, there was no issue or even a rumor that would involve Senator De Lima sa drug trading. Because if he knows kung meron talagang ganyan, he would have taken action against the Secretary. Eh. Si General Bato has been quoted several times in the newspaper na tinatakot yung mga witnesses. Marami, marami siya sinabi regarding sa to mga inmates na to eh. But a prosecution witness said that there is no intimidation nor pressure inflicted upon the witnesses against the senator. Kasi alam mo, may video po kami eh, nung nagtetestify ang mga uh, bilanggong yan eh. Binidyo namin, nandoon yung abogado nila, nandoon ang PAO, nandoon ang BJMP. Oh, wala po makakapressure niya, they have nothing to lose eh. Kaya mag-testify kay hindi yan, yung iba dyan eh, sentensyado na eh. Oo, we have nothing to offer them. Diane's pre-trial is reset on February 8, while the Lima's trial is set on February 22. The prosecution welcomes such developments. The purpose of the testimony of President Aquino, uh, they, they gave an answer that uh, based on the reports made by, uh, based on the intelligence report, but they will be presenting Anyo, they will be presenting other military officers. I don't, I don't see any materiality of it. But uh, at any rate, we will just wait for the former president to testify. 
My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Montinlupa City. The House of Representatives has imposed stricter rules in releasing their Statement of Assets, Liabilities and Net Worth or SAL-N. Grace Cassin explains why. The House of Representatives has adopted House Resolution 2467, principally authored by House Speaker Gloria Arroyo. The resolution states that a majority consent of the lawmakers is required before the public can access their Statement of Assets, Liabilities and Net Worth or SAL-N. In the previous guideline summary report of the salen of each congressman are automatically posted in their official website. But in order to access those documents, the plenary must approve it first. Albay Representative Ed Salagman in his statement said if Congress have nothing to hide, why make access to and disclosure of salen is difficult when these are public documents anyway. Based on Section 8.4 of the Republic Act 6713, any statement filed under this Act shall be available to the public. This is why Akbayan Party List Representative Tom Villarin believes that this should be challenged in court. But Majority Leader Fred Neil Castro in his statement stressed that under House Resolution 2467, the rights of parties requesting for sal and copies, as well as those of congressmen and House personnel, must be protected. He assured that the resolution remains faithful to the principle of transparency. Employees and officials of the government are required to submit their salen on an annual basis, wherein their assets, liabilities, and net worth, along with that of their spouse and children, are stated. Failure to submit or misdeclaration of wealth in the salen may lead to office disqualification. This was what happened to former Chief Justice Renato Corona who was impeached for not declaring his bank deposits as assets on his salen. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A bill seeking for the, for the installation of closed-circuit television cameras in all establishments nationwide to help curb criminalities may take a long time before getting enacted. This report explains why. Barangay Doña Josefa is one of the communities in Quezon City that has stringent measures in securing the neighborhood. Closed circuit television cameras or CCTVs are installed in every lamppost in the barangay, which community officials believe is a big help in restraining criminal elements. Videos captured by the CCTV can also be used as evidence in case of crimes. Itong CCTV namin sa barangay, malaking tulong po. Lala na yung mga... Uh, vehicular accident at saka mga ano yung mga tandem yung nakikita namin sa area kung meron sa kali. To date, the CCTV cameras for security and crime prevention bill that seeks a mandatory installation of CCTVs in all establishments as well as schools, roads and other public places nationwide has already been filed in Congress. The author of the bill believes that this will be a big help in ensuring that the whole community is being protected. The bill elicited a favorable reaction from the public. Siyempre, yung CCTV kasi nakakatulong, di ba? Pag lahat ng mga nangyayari sa ano, mga lalaman mo. Pag may mga, pag may mga masasamang tao, ano. Ma Mahal po, gawa ng pag may CCTV, makikita natin yung mga gumagawa ng masama. The bill, however, is still pending in the Senate. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Commission on Elections admits it lacks budget to pay for the honoraria of teachers who will serve in the electoral board for the midterm polls. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Commission on Elections or COMELEC reveals it lacks fund to pay for the honorario of teachers who will serve in the May 2019 national and local elections. The COMELEC is seeking Congress's approval for additional fund for the upcoming polls. According to the COMELEC's Finance Services Department, they need 3.2 billion pesos for the compensation of teachers who will voluntarily serve as Board of Election Inspectors or BEIs. For the compensation of our poll workers in the 2019 on national local elections, um, we have a budget under the NEP for 2019. We have a budget of 1.9 billion, which is also 
not sufficient uh, to pay the teachers and other volunteers because what we need is 3.2 billion. Comelec spokesperson James Jimenez said that if teachers are not well compensated, they would violate the Election Service Reform Act or ESRA. Ang problema talaga natin is that election service is not simple. It is not easy. And the teachers deserve to be recompensed for it. So yun ang concern natin. Kawawa naman yung mga guru natin na maghihirap para magtrabaho tapos hindi naman pala sila mababayaran. I don't want to speculate on how teachers will react if we tell them that you're going to have to work without pay. The honorarium of an electoral board chairperson is 6,000 pesos, while each member of the electoral board must receive 5,000 pesos. A Department of Education supervisor, official, or DESO must be paid 4,000 pesos, while every member of the support staff shall receive 2,000 pesos for his or her service. Comelex data show 262,500 teachers nationwide are expected to give voluntary service in the May 2019 national and local polls. Comelec maintains its appeal to lawmakers to give fair and appropriate honorarium for each volunteer on the electoral board. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Former presidential spokesperson Harry Roque on Friday withdrew his bid for the 2019 midterm elections. In his official statement of withdrawal, Roque cited health reasons, specifically an unstable angina coronary disease in which he had to undergo heart surgery. Roque said that while he decided to finally set aside his senatorial plans, he said he, said he still hopes to return to public service and vows to remain supportive of President Rodrigo Duterte and his administration even as a private individual. The Commission on Elections, meanwhile, confirmed receiving Roque's withdrawal letter and said that once the formal and procedural requirements are fulfilled, Roque's name will be removed from the official ballot for the 2019 polls. He may be a newbie in the political arena, but attorney Jose Sani Matula doesn't consider himself a newcomer when it comes to public service. Grace Kaskin tells us why. Senatorial hopeful attorney Jose Sane Matula should not be considered as a novice in Philippine politics. He is the current president of the Federation of Free Workers, a group that upholds protection of workers' rights all through its decade-long existence. In an interview in the program Get It Straight with Daniel Razon, Matula argued that it is but necessary for the labor sector to have a voice or representation in the Senate, which should come from within them. Attorney Matula's priority agenda would be the establishment of a national minimum wage and the abolition of the contractualization. Kung may maganda at disente ang trabaho ng mga magangkawa, ay maganda yan sa ekonomiya ng Pilipinas. At kung maganda ang ekonomiya ng Pilipinas, ay magkikreate yan ng maraming trabaho. trabaho. Matula argued that despite the implementation of law against labor-only contracting, contractualization scheme is still very much evident in the Philippine labor system because the penalty is light. Alimbawa, kung uh, mayroon kang isang libong labor-only contracting, i-impose sa'yo is 1,000 pesos. Ibig sabihin ang penalty, 1 peso per worker. Meanwhile, Matula said he is opposed to the reinstatement of death penalty as he believes that anyone who violated the law deserves a chance for reformation. And although he expressed support to the government's war on drugs, he opposed what he claims as unjustifiable acts of murdering the innocent. He also supports the administration's plan for a federal shift, but not that of the House version. Yan, kasi tinanggal sa Constitution yung karapatan ng mga magagawa para magparticipate sa decision-making. Mm -hmm. Yung living wage na provision ay nawala. Mm -hmm. Tapos yung anti-dynasty provision, mm -hmm. nawala. Attorney Matula believes it is important for the government to strengthen the agriculture and improve the lives of local farmers as among the most important sectors in the country's economy. He also expressed support to the declaration of martial law as he believes that the public's human rights remain protected under the military rule. Grace Kassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Scientists are studying a mummified body in Ecuador that may be the missing link in understanding the spread of rheumatoid polyarthritis in Europe. 
Eileen Cerudo tells us why. A 16th century mummified body that was found upright in the wall of an Ecuadorian church could shed new light into the history of diseases between Europe and the New World. The guano mummy was first discovered in 1949 after an earthquake exposed part of a wall stuck behind the wall for centuries and protected from rats and flies. The well-preserved remains has long intrigued experts. Now in 2019, a French pathologist who has previously studied the remains of Hitler is scanning the mummy to see what clues it holds into the history of diseases. What makes it strange is that the mummy was found in an upright position, without a casket, without any offerings. It was not a typical grave. Its position was strange. Preliminary findings of the mummy has found an inflammatory disease in its joints, possibly revealing a rheumatoid polyarthritis that was common in the Americas and which predates the arrival of Christopher Columbus. There are theories abound on the guano mummy. Urban legend has dubbed the man a local friar, but experts believe the burial of the individual does not suggest he held a religious title. Tests so far have identified a likely cause of death a chin fistula that could have turned into an abscess and placed the man's age at about 90 years old. Further tests into the mummy are still to be carried out using carbon dating, radiographs, and endoscopies. DNA tests can be made uh, relatively quickly. I think that uh, within the next few months, before the sixth next month, you will get the results of the DNA analysis. Uh, DNA analysis will be made here in Ecuador. Experts hope to paint a fuller picture of the mummy and his profile in the coming months. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV, News and Rescue. Up next on Y News. Polar vortex claims eight lives as U.S. cold snap continues. State-of-the-art electric cars soon to race on remote places on the planet. And China's useless Edison goes viral with his wacky designs. And those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Why News returns with William Theo. I'm Angelo Castro III. Good evening.